Liverpool have remembered how to play football once again. In what seems like a cycle of being hot and cold, they are playing like the elite club we know them to be. 2019-20, champions. 2021, third place, somehow. They were awful for large parts of that year. 21-22, incredible. One point from the domestic crown, one goal from the European crown, and winners of two cups. 22-23, ass. There are several factors that have influenced this current resurgence though. The team looks a lot different, that one's a given. But one factor that stands out amongst the rest continues to show us all why Jurgen Klopp is as respected as he is. Discipline. The hard running and concentration is back. A completely revamped midfield will do that. Virgil van Dijk has finally returned from the Shadow Realm. Do you, do you hear that? Me neither. Darwin Nunez's haters have been quiet for some time now, and Mo Salah is, well, Mo Salah. In a season where after 10 games, five teams have displayed immaculate gameplay, Liverpool are right up there with the best. But what's led to this turnaround and what can we expect? Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinashe, welcome back to the channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, helps out a lot, but no pressure. As most of you probably remember, Liverpool forgot how to play football last year. It was a tragic tale for the Reds, but they're up and firing once again. A scary prospect for those of us who know how good they are when they're at their best. But with a super competitive league roster to go up against, the less than ideal Thursday fixture schedule, and the headaches surrounding a never ending stadium upgrade, what can we expect from this side and what have they been lacking in recent times. I tell you what they haven't been lacking, a high quality kit. Which reminds me of the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Sangalo, an official football jersey partner with a bit of a twist. What I'm wearing right now is the Highlanders FC jersey, a football team from Zimbabwe. Sangalo have partnered with some of the biggest teams from some of the most underappreciated leagues in the world to increase global exposure and bring you rare high quality jerseys and they ship globally. Regular viewers of this channel will know that I don't usually do sponsored posts and there are two reasons for that. Number one is I don't want to push things onto you guys that you wouldn't potentially be interested in and number two, I don't want to push things onto you guys that aren't cool projects. This is a cool project. As a matter of fact, you can get this exact same jersey on the Sangalo website for 20% off as part of their holiday promo. If you want to grab your own and support the channel in the process, head over to sangalo.co or use the link in the description. Thanks again to Sangalo back to Liverpool. Over the past two years, Liverpool have gone through a bit of a reshuffle. They've lost huge personalities that made them the side that they were that won them the trophies that they did. Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino, Jordan Henderson, Gini Wijnaldum, Fabinho, the list goes on. Those losses and more culminated in a 22-23 season that was far below the required level for a club of this stature. And even though they finished strong last season, going undefeated in their last 11 games, it just wasn't a good year for them. They won only 6 of their 19 away games last year, losing 8, drawing 5. They were having a lot of trouble playing against teams in the lower half of the table. In the 21-22 season, they had an almost perfect record of 58 points in the 20 games they played against their bottom 10 teams. In the 22-23 season, they only managed 36 points. It's a big difference. There were more injuries than anybody expected. They experienced more missed games due to injury than any other Premier League team the entire year. According to a 21st group senior data scientist, Aurel Nazmiu, really sorry if I butchered your name there man, I appreciate your work, Reds players missed nearly 160 matches in total last year. This definitely contributed to what I believe was the biggest weakness of this Liverpool team last year, their midfield. For a team that bullied the opposition for so many years, particularly due to the strength of their midfield, they were horrendously passive. Fabinho, Jordan Henderson and Thiago were the main three for them and they were getting run over weekly. Of course it didn't help that they went for Aurelian Chouameni who was Real Madrid bound. They were planning on going for Jude Bellingham who was a Dortmund player at the time but realistically he was probably also Real Madrid bound even back then. They brought in Arthur on a season long loan. The man literally played zero Premier League matches and took up space in the nursing bed the rest of the time he was there. They got scammed. Naby Keita and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, who need I remind all of you are both still under 30 years old, were both also allergic to minutes. It was a mess. There may have been the fatigue endured from almost winning the quadruple. They played the maximum 63 games in 21-22, with the likes of Jordan Henderson and Diogo Jota playing 57 
and 55 games, respectively. There was Jurgen Klopp's infamous seventh season syndrome. In both of his two previous managerial jobs, he's had unbelievable success given the levels that he's been playing at for those clubs, respectively. But he's never made it to an eighth season. In fact, his seventh season for those clubs has been particularly forgetful. The trend goes on. At Mainz, he couldn't lead them back to the Bundesliga from the second tier. At Dortmund, he was in the relegation zone at Christmas before finishing seventh. There are lots of reasons that contribute to this. He employs an aggressive play style, he demands a lot from his players, and sometimes that has a time limit. There are so many other things that went wrong for Liverpool last year, things where we probably will never be able to quantify how much of an impact they had on the club. Sporting director Michael Edwards, who had been with the club for 11 years, overseeing sporting decisions during Liverpool's most successful period in the Premier League era, left. Him and several other important backroom staff too. And then there was the ruckus that was likely caused in the boardroom when it seemed as though FSG were looking to sell Liverpool. It's not out of question that that probably affected the morale in the dressing room. All of this contributed to Jurgen Klopp probably being lucky to still be in a job at varying points over the year. I only say this due to how low Liverpool were at certain points and how high the expectations are at this great club. It was most definitely the goodwill that he bought over the past six years that kept him in a job in Merseyside. They still beat Manchester United 7-0 though. Hmm. In 22-23, something seems different. At the time of recording this video, Liverpool have lost only once and are in fourth place but are only three points off the league leaders. And even that loss can be considered an anomaly. Firstly, it was at the hands of the league leaders and it only happened because Liverpool went down to nine men. More on that in a bit. They are aggressive as ever. They're as compact as ever. They're as clinical as ever. They really are great to watch when they're in full flow. As a Man United fan, it's not ideal, but as a football fan, I love watching these guys play. Obviously, a lot of this is due to good recruitment, as well as the return to form of a lot of existing players. The midfield is alive and kicking, and mostly brand spanking new. Dominic Soboslai, Alexis McAllister, Ryan Gravenberch, and Wataru Endo have added some much needed vitality and urgency to the middle of the park. Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott have stepped up themselves. Apart from Endo, all of these players are under 24 years old. They do still lack a true defensive midfielder, which is a bit of an issue as they play with two eights. In the past, rightly so, Liverpool have been very confident to leave a prime Fabinho as the only pivot in the midfield. But Alexis McAllister, who's been played as the sole pivot so far this year, doesn't exactly have the defensive capabilities of the Brazilian. Don't get me wrong, he's a fantastic player. A World Cup winner, even. Being tossed with covering huge distances left when his fellow midfielders go wandering up the pitch is no easy feat. Endo is a more specialized DM, but he has yet to get fully up to speed with how Liverpool plays. Soboslai is quite the player. He's got the passing range, he has the shooting range, and he has the work rate. Trent Alexander-Arnold is still drifting into midfield and pinging balls that could find your missing father. Maybe the most reassuring factor influencing Liverpool's return to form is the consistency that Virgil van Dijk has shown. At one point, he was being put in the conversation for the best centre-back in Premier League history. The next, Jordan Pickford mistook the Merseyside derby for the WWE. And when he returned, I wouldn't say he was back to his best. It took some time, but... I think he is now. Towards the end of last season, everyone was drained. It was a huge disappointment. We didn't find the consistency. I definitely sense a different vibe and energy in the club. After Jordan Henderson left for Saudi Arabia, it only made sense that Virgil van Dijk took up the captaincy. We see him before each match, leading the team huddle. We hear nothing but positivity regarding how he welcomes the new recruits into the fold. In a shocking turn of events, Mohamed Salah is still unbelievable. He's a victim of his own success in a lot of ways. Last season, there were murmurs of him falling off or, you know, losing his form, all that nonsense. Do people not realize that he's never scored less than 19 goals in a Premier League season in six years? He's only made less than 10 assists in a Premier League season once in six years. He's had dips in form. Listen, I'm not going to deny that, but no more than any of the other current active greats in world football. You put him in your squad, you're guaranteed goal scoring and creative output. The strength in the unit has been on full show all year, but this shows mostly in matches where they've gone down a man. Liverpool had to go down to nine men and the referee had to be high on something or paid to be high on something 
for Spurs to take points off of them. This match was a disgrace. I already spoke about it at the time, but that first 20 minutes or so made it look like we were in store for some of the most expansive and attacking football that we had witnessed this current season. We were robbed. Curtis Jones and Diogo Jota went off in that one. Alexis McAllister went off against Bournemouth. Liverpool were 2-1 up when that happened, and they went on to win it by three goals to one. They were a goal down against Newcastle when Virgil van Dijk went off. They went on to win 2-1 thanks to Darwin Nunez. When they're down, they don't panic. They switch to a 4-4-1 and keep it pushing. Newcastle and Bournemouth fail to find answers to a 10-man Liverpool. Spurs would have been in the same boat, but some craziness happened. They don't panic when they're up either. In the Merseyside derby, Everton went down to 10 men after 37 minutes. Most teams would go ultra attacking here and try to make use of the extra space available. Liverpool did not. They stayed disciplined. They scored two, once in the 75th minute, once in the 97th minute. It's very impressive. Things have been going smoothly for Liverpool so far this year, but as all of us know, there's a lot to be wary about. An injury crisis is always just around the corner. Liverpool know that all too well. With every EPL match being high intensity, must win, and over a weekend, Thursday night Europa League matches aren't exactly ideal. All of this contributes to a fixture congestion too, which doesn't help everything that's going on off the pitch for Liverpool too, more particularly at Anfield. Something that some may not be paying attention to are the ongoing stadium upgrades taking place at Anfield. Liverpool have been undergoing a stadium upgrade which will see Anfield at 7,000 seats, taking it from a 53,000 seater to a 61,000 seater. In an unfortunate sequence of events, the initial contracting company that was appointed to complete the upgrade appointed administrators to prevent liquidation. Initially, construction was planned to be completed before the current season, but delays, delays and more delays meant that uh, that did not happen. It's not a pretty story. Buckingham Group, a once thriving company that worked on Brighton, Brentford and MK Don stadiums, is now in peril. Brexit, labor shortages, rising material costs and more have been identified as reasons for this collapse. From a big picture perspective, what do you think this translates to? Money. The loss of a lot of money and frustration for fans and employees of the club alike. You know, due to the ongoing construction, Anfield has been reduced to a 50,000-seater stadium. Before the season began, they sold tickets based on a 61,000-seater stadium. They do not have those 11,000 seats. According to The Athletic, it's estimated that this is translating to a loss of roughly £750,000 per game as they struggle to cater to those that they sold essentially non-existent tickets to. Add on the cost of appointing a new contractor that knows that Liverpool are in a pinch and can therefore up the price as they please. Add on the cost of paying for delays. Add on the cost of only being able to do construction on selected non-game days because we're in an active season. It would have been a lot easier if they've done this, you know, during the off-season, right? I actually spent a few days in Liverpool over the off-season and saw a very active construction site. The fact that it's still underway is definitely not ideal. As of right now, no specific date is set for the completion of these upgrades, but it definitely won't be in 2023, I can tell you that much. Apart from the obvious problems with loss of revenue and internal shenanigans going on at Liverpool, bringing it back to football, what does this actually mean for you, the fan? Well, it means that a lot of people won't be able to see their boys play even after purchasing tickets, which really, really sucks because this Liverpool team is really good. You know, I think that they could do something special. I think that they could win big this year. Maybe. How big? Time, injuries, and results elsewhere will tell. We'll just have to wait and see. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about this Liverpool side and their chances. Feel free to follow the socials. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, that's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.